Thank you very much. So today, I'm going to very briefly talk about the move from VM to IM, or from virtual machine to intent machine. And before we start, or like as a beginning, let's quickly go through the evolution of protocols to kind of like recap how we got to where we are today. And really, in the beginning, it all started with Bitcoin and Bitcoin-like architectures, right? Like when you think Bitcoin, I'm also thinking like Litecoin, Zcash, Monero, you name it. These are all fundamentally transaction-centric systems. They have limited scripting capability, so you can't build very complex applications, but they allow you to build some applications. And so sort of they were really the forerunners here with things like colored coins um, or things like the global Bitcoin stock exchange. But again, in a transaction-centric world, there are limitations here. And sort of we ended up in this virtual machine-centric world that we are in right now, mostly due to the limitations that we found with scripting, like with scriptable settlement in the Bitcoin world. Um, and really, this is the world we live in today around uh, virtual machines. Ethereum, Nia, Solana, all of these systems are fundamentally virtual machine-centric or VM-centric. And all of a sudden, instead of having to build colored coins, we got ERC-20s. Instead of just having the global Bitcoin stock exchange, we managed to get AMMs. So, the apps became about an order of magnitude more expressive and about an order of magnitude easier to build. And there's going to be the next wave, which is IMs or intent machines. And really, we are moving towards intent-centric architectures. And with Anoma, I'd like to tell you a little bit about sort of the very first design for a fully generalized intent-centric architecture. And I would posit here that um, the same move that we saw when we moved from um, sort of transaction-centric designs to virtual machine-centric designs, we'll see about the same order of magnitude gain uh, when we move from virtual machine-centric designs towards intent-centric uh, designs. So with that quick TLDR, um, in Bitcoin, you really authorize transactions. In Ethereum, you authorize execution traces. You authorize how to perform specific steps. In, in, tense, in Anoma and in intent-centric designs, you authorize specific end states. And like the states here are really arbitrary. You can authorize arbitrary end states, and the system can sort of figure out how to get you, um, how to achieve what you wanted from your intent. Um, so yeah, everyone talks about intents all the time. And really, most people, when they talk of intents, they mean limit orders. And this is not incorrect. Limit orders happen to be a very special or specialized kind of intent. But with Anoma, you get a fully generalized intent machine. It's not specific to limit orders. It's like anything you can express as some conditional state transition. As in, I want to move from state A to B, that's an intent. The intent doesn't really matter whether it represents a limit order, so it represents a price, or it may represent a vote in a DAO. It may represent a uh, vote in a Gitcoin DAO funding round. Right? Like, these are truly generalized intents. So you can build all the specialized kind of intents on top of this um, and many more things. Um, a little bit of a sort of primer here on what's the difference, actually, or what does the virtual machine do versus what does the intent machine do? And a VM really is it's an instruction set. It's a program counter. It's a bunch of different layers of memory. Um, and importantly, it runs programs sequentially. The best example we currently have of these kinds of systems are the Ethereum virtual machine, really. This is the OG virtual machine. But nowadays, we also have like the Solana uh, virtual machine, the SVM, or the virtual machine of Nier, right? There are many kinds of different virtual machines. But fundamentally, they always follow this model of imperative sequential program execution. And I am, on the other hand, an intent machine takes a batch of intents and computes possible valid state transitions. And then according to some criterion, selects uh, sort of what updates to apply to the system state. And here, really, the criterions are either defined within the intents or they're defined by developers of applications. Um, currently, there are no generalized intent machines yet. Um, so the Anoma resource machine is really the first generalized intent machine in existence. By the way, if you're interested, there's specs at Anoma.net that specs out the entire virtual machine or the entire intent machine. Um, I think one really important point to highlight here is it is not that an intent machine replaces a virtual machine. Intent machines are just high level of abstractions that developers and users can interact with that sit and run on top of existing uh, virtual machines. So Anoma fundamentally, it's a new paradigm. It's we're evolving the infrastructure. We're moving away from 
uh, transaction and virtual machine centric design. So it's an intent centric paradigm where applications as well, so developers as well as users can leverage intents rather than leverage transactions under the hood. And this is quite important because building um, good execution environments for intent machine, is, it's, it really matters. Um, the other thing for builders, um, with a normal you actually get fully generalized intents. But there's a bunch of other things like decentralized counterpart discovery, distributed solving. A lot of these things come for free effectively or fall out of a properly designed intent machine architecture. And you also get a bunch of cool things like novel properties like information flow control. And really this is a, about allowing users to decide what kind of data to reveal to the network. Because I think we're going to be moving into this world where a lot of the state doesn't, won't live long term in this like central globally or globally mutable state, which is really the model we have, but rather a lot of state will end up living on edge devices. Um, and so information flow control is really all about how do users reveal certain parts of their state to the global network and in what way. Um, yeah, and then lastly, really this is um, intent-centric designs allow users to more easily reason about the system because rather than signing a specific execution trace and like this opcode gets to modify some state, this opcode gets to modify some other state, users just sign over specific state changes, which is much easier to understand sort of from an end user perspective. Um, so yeah, Anoma, it's a universal intent machine. If anyone ever asks you what Anoma is, it's a universal intent machine. Um, and it's, a, it's important to understand, Anoma is a universal intent machine for Ethereum. So builders can write dApps um, as, instant, as intents instead of transactions, and intents and dApps written in Anoma can be ordered, solved, and settled anywhere. This may mean they are settled on the Ethereum main chain, or they could be settled on some EVM or non-EVM rollup, or even something like an eigenlayer AVS. This is really the important thing to understand is um, intents can be settleable anywhere where the users actually want to settle them. This is, uh, the security model is defined by the users, so wherever they, they can pick in their intents what security model that intent wants to get executed in or should get executed in. Um, but this generalizes. So Anoma is an intent machine not only for Ethereum, but could also be an intent machine for Solana, Cosmos, Near, you name it. Really, any sufficiently programmable virtual machine is, kind of, is going to be capable of running um, Anoma as an intent machine. And this is, I will speak a little bit more about this point, but this is very important to me. Whenever you interact with systems, you should be thinking on, um, is it an interface or is it an intermediary? And Anoma is an inter interface and it's not an intermediary. And what does this actually mean? Intermediaries, while sometimes valuable, are actors in a network. They're specific parties with which you engage. They add, they either charge fees or they add into security model, they add complexity, they add latency. Um, so intermediaries really, they are specific counterparties that you interact with. And this could be a single key, this could be a blockchain, but it's an intermediary you interact with. Um, in the Ethereum ecosystem, actually one very good example is most modern bridges right now are just intermediaries. There are, whether it's a multi-sig um, bridge or a chain um, bridge, they're generally counterparties which you must consider in your security model. Um, in the real world, actually banks are a great example of this. Banks are clearly intermediaries that you must use in order to access the financial system. Um, and they do add to your latency, to your security concerns, right? So think of this as intermediaries. Uh, interfaces, on the other hand, are just protocols. They are just open source code. They are freely copyable, they're deployable by other people, um, they're deployable and forkable by yourself. Uh, they're not specific parties that you interact with. They're just standard definitions that everyone agrees on. Um, in the real world, TCP IP, perfect example of a protocol, not an intermediary, where I don't have to talk to a single Oracle server uh, to access the internet, I just use TCP IP, my own implementation in my own language if I wanted to, and I now can connect to other people that speak the same protocol. So this is, TCP IP is an interface. Um, and Anoma is the same way. Anoma is a protocol. It's an interface for declarative intents, imperative ordering, compute and storage semantics. Um, it is just an abstraction. If you don't like parts of it, you can fork it, you can run it yourself. Uh, and this is really important to understand. There's no Anoma chain to which you must send your intents. Um, you can just send you an, if you, in, like, if you use the Anoma protocol, you can just settle an order and execute these intents on Ethereum if you wanted to, or wherever else you want to deploy this protocol. Uh, yeah, so not enough people in crypto do this, but whenever you do, 
please think, are you interacting with an interface or an intermediary? Because the distinction really matters. Um, so yeah, if you want to join the discussion, by the way, here on Intents um, and Anoma is a universal intent machine for Ethereum, uh, please have a look. This is a great post on ETH Research. Um, it's a bit lengthy. You should read it, but it takes like two hours. Um, the last bit I'd like to talk about is scale-free. Uh, and Anoma really here is scale-free. So Anoma's architecture makes no reference to specific scaling behavior because it is as local um, as possible. Right? And so it's a new paradigm in terms of what you can do with scaling, where you get both local and global scalability without losing interoperability. And this is sort of to understand that if, the three, of, if three of us are in a room, we can use the Anoma protocol locally between the three of us. If we then want to like, coordinate across the ocean, we use a different deployment of the normal protocol. But like, really, the architecture makes no reference to this kind of scale. It does not predefine the topology of the network. Um, and this is really important when you think about this. Uh, topology is defined by actual user behavior. And so if three people want to like, sit in a room and do some trading, the topology should follow that actual physical behavior. And this is what Anoma does. Um, but at the same time, if those three people leave, they can also very easily roam into a global thing. Um, and this is maybe here a very quick, cool example, which is from the real world. Our phones act this way. Like when I travel to a new country, I don't have to buy a new phone because my phone can roam between different deployments of the wireless stack. Um, and Anoma enables exactly the same thing where applications can roam between different security models, right? Like my application can now roam between, I don't know, the global Anoma instance. Um, as well as, I don't know, the New York Anoma instance, right? Like you can take, uh, we have a standard protocol definition and you can roam between all these different deployments. Um, yeah, so quick TLDR, uh, we are clearly moving, uh, the movement has been from transaction-centric designs towards virtual machine-centric virtual machine designs towards intent machine-centric designs. Um, VMs and IMs are not competitors. They are very compatible and one built on top of the other. Um, Intent machines really offer a new paradigm, um, both in terms of the infrastructure, the builders as well as the users. Um, and yeah, Anoma is a universal intent machine. Um, it's deployable in many places, so you can deploy it to Ethereum, to Solana, to Cosmos, or to any other sovereign chain. And this could even be like a chain run by a national government. Um, Anoma, the architecture, the protocol doesn't care. Uh, you can deploy it into whatever security model you'd like. Um, yep, yeah, think of inter interfaces, not intermediaries. And Really, the paradigm here is it's a scale-free architecture. It's, the topology is defined by user behavior, not by, a network, uh, by, not by protocol designers, which I think not enough people really consider when building these architectures. You want to allow your users to define the topology of how nodes connect to each other and like, what the actual deployment is going to be like, and you don't want to pre-specify this. So yeah, if you'd like this, um, again, um, hit up the uh, Anoma research topics. It's a bunch of research papers that explain a lot of the underlying architecture. You can also go to the research.anoma.net forum and engage there. Um, or yeah, just go to the website. Thank you very much.